This is Banjo, and today I'll be demonstrating unguided rocket employment in the Camo 50 for DCS World. I'll be displaying the various types of S8 80mm rockets that are available for the Camo, as well as the S13 122mm heavy rockets, which can be used to destroy heavier installations such as bunkers or command installations or heavily armored targets. For the first example, I'll be demonstrating the use of the S8 OM illumination rocket has a range of about 4 to 5 kilometers, although as seen in this example you can push the range out further, depending on the elevation you pitch up to. So first I'll enable master arm, select the pylon I wish to launch from, pitch up 15 to 20 degrees, and fire off a couple of pairs. At this point I'll level out and counteract the rearwards movement I've created by pitching backwards. Ballistically the rockets will fly just like any other, and after about 15 to 20 seconds, the nose will separate, releasing the flare, providing light for roughly 30 seconds. As we can see, it's enough light that I'm able to use my targeting system to conduct an ATGM launch on these two targets that are on the target area. And due to the fact that the flares are providing the artificial light needed for the targeting system, it's able to attack them with a high degree of accuracy. Well, as we can see here, the flares burn out about two-thirds of the way through the flight of the second rocket. Carrying the S-8 OM illumination rocket is pretty essential at night operations due to the fact that it allows you to engage targets close to the max range of your Vicar missiles. In this next example, I'll be going over the S-8 TSM target marking smoke rocket. And I'll be using it to mark a set of targets for our wingman to take out in an air-to-ground strike using bombs and air-to-ground missiles. The S-8 TSM smoke rocket's range is not properly listed in the flight manual. Although, as can be seen here, it can push out fairly far, but a good estimate as to its effective maximum range accurately would be anywhere at about 3.5 kilometers. Employment is as simple as placing the rocket pipper over the target area and firing up to the effective range of the rocket, or as seen in this example, placing the shawl over the target area, lining up the pipper with the shawl reticle and firing. Employment is similar to the S-8 KOM or the S-8 FP-2 rockets. In this third example, I'll be demonstrating the use of the S-8 FP-2 fragmentation rocket, which can be used to engage infantry and other soft targets, with an effective range of around 4 kilometers. Employment is similar to the S-8 TSM smoke rocket, where we engage master arm, select the hardpoint we wish to fire from, and place the rocket pipper over the target area, firing up to our max effective range, or we can use the Schwal camera, Align the rocket paper with the Schwal reticle and fire on the target area. I've increased the burst salvo on the weapons computer as to blanket the target area with as much fire in my initial volley as I can, as there are several heavy machine guns on light armored vehicles in there, as well as a Stinger manpower. And by about the time my second volley impacts target area, we can see my wingmen coming in to destroy the lighter armored targets. In this fourth example, which will be the final example covering the S8 80mm series of rockets, we'll demonstrate the use of the S8 KOM heat rocket, which can be used to engage armored targets such as this M1A2 main battle tank. I'm firing at its full frontal armor at short range to demonstrate that 80mm heat rockets are going to be ineffective against the frontal armor of a main battle tank. To destroy this thing, or even cause any significant damage to it, I'm going to have to either fire into its upper armor along its top side, or, as is the case that I will demonstrate, firing into its side armor and rear armor. Trimming into a side slip and running alongside it, I'll put a pair of rockets directly into its side armor. And coming along the rear side of it, I'll put two more pairs of rockets into its rear. Two hit its rear, two hit its side, at which point the tank is destroyed. So when using the S-8 KOM heat rockets against armored targets, 
especially against heavier armor targets such as main battle tanks. Be sure to attack them from the side that presents the least amount of armor possible. In this final example, I'll be demonstrating the use of the S13 122mm heavy rocket, which was designed to penetrate hardened aircraft bunkers, command installations, and bunkers such as this pillbox here. In DCS, it's not able to penetrate hardened aircraft bunkers, and it tends to take repeated direct hits on even small bunkers to take them out using them. They're considerably heavier than the S8 rockets, so they're limited to 5 per pod. So per set of hard points, you carry 10. Their range is considerably shorter than the S8s, mainly due to their effective accuracy. You can still use them out to 3 and 4 kilometers, although accuracy suffers quite a bit from the increased range. As we can see, striking these bunkers directly I was able to take out the smaller one, although five direct hits on the larger one, it still stands. One benefit to the S-13 rocket over the S-8 rockets is the fact that it has a greatly increased splash radius and increased damage within that radius. So to use it against soft group targets or a convoy such as I'm about to attack, you can use them to great effect. They basically become, for all intents and purposes, a 122mm high explosive rocket. The first salvo was able to knock out all of the vehicles containing machine guns capable of defending the column, leaving what appears to be a lone BMD-1. When employing unguided weapons such as S-8 or S-13 rockets, the ballistic data settings selector needs to be set to the proper selection for the weapon type being employed. Position 0 for S8 COM, 1 for S8 TSM smoke, 2 for S13, 3 is unused as it's for S24 rockets not supported in DCS, position 4 being for S8 high explosive rockets, and 5 for the EPK-23 gun pods. As we can see here, setting the data selector in the improper setting will result in incorrect data being fed to the weapons computer resulting in a miss on the target that you are currently attempting to fire on, whereas selecting it for the correct setting will feed the correct data into the weapons computer, allowing you to hit your target provided you are within valid parameters to do so.